Hey guys, it's Brian with Retired at 40. I hope you're all happy and healthy and today we are going out with the old and in with the new because I'm going to freeze dry some spaghetti squash that came out of the garden last year and I've got some left and before the new stuff comes in. So I want to see if I can freeze dry it. I've never freeze dried spaghetti squash or squash in general. And today we're going to find out how it fares. So there's a couple ways to cook squash. I'm gonna do some in the oven. I'm gonna do some in the instant pot, which it happens real fast. And then I think I'm gonna keep one uh, actually raw in the freeze dryer just to see if we can reconstitute it raw. Regardless of how you're doing it, uh, you have to cut the squash in half. And the best way I think is to cut it the long way. And if you're putting it in the oven, you're gonna to wanna to take the top off and then take a gigantic knife and just cut it down that way. You're going to want a really sharp knife and that helps a bunch. Once we're all cut in half, you're going to want to take all of this goo out of here. And if you want to replant, obviously you're going to save these seeds. And one thing I love about squash is you plant one seed and you have 10 squash. <laughs> Here's a picture of what five plants got us last year. When you're scraping this out, make sure you don't get too much because you can actually start scraping away a lot of the edible stuff. So just get the basic seeds and strings out of there. Before I get too far along here, I'm gonna set my oven on 400 and let that warm up. I saved the seeds from this year, from this last year's spaghetti squash because it ended up being really sweet. And a lot of times spaghetti squash is kind of bland. So I saved a bunch of them just so we can keep growing that variety. I'm not sure if you can save the seeds and bake them like you do pumpkin seeds. If anyone's ever tried that, let me know in the comments section. If you're doing this in the Instant Pot, it's really quick and fast. Add one cup of water to your Instant Pot. And then I can, you can do several squash at a time if, it's, uh, if they're small. But I'm going I'm to actually just do one in here. If you have these things to set at the bottom, put your lid on. Make sure it's sealed and then we're going to go to seven minutes of pressure cook. And by the time it actually builds up pressure, you really, it's, they're done in about 15 minutes. And then for the ones that go in the oven, you're just gonna take some olive oil and you wanna brush about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of olive oil all over the inside and around the edges. And then you're gonna place them face down. And we're gonna pop these in the oven at 400 from 40 minutes to an hour. And I'm gonna check back on them in 40 minutes. You want the edges to be nice and golden brown. So I do tend to like the, the spaghetti squash that's been cooked in the oven a lot better because it cooks in that oil and it adds a lot of flavor to it and you get a little bit of that crispiness too. But the Instant Pot makes it so fast that it's hard not to do it that way. But I'm hoping with the freeze drying thing that we can just uh, rehydrate it really quickly and it won't matter which way you do it. I think for the, the uncooked spaghetti squash, I think just so it'll fit into the trays, I'm gonna cut it down lengthwise like this. And that should do it, I think. So we'll have two spaghetti squash, and then when we, when we rehydrate, we'll have to do one of the two ways to cook it. Our Instant Pot went a little over, but while we're waiting for that, take a minute to subscribe. Click on the bell so you can get notifications of future videos that come out. Also, while you're there, hit the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm get this video out to people who want to view this type of video. Also consider joining the Facebook group. It has just exploded since we started it and it's been really helpful for lots of people, including myself. All right, so now that these are done, they should just pretty much fall apart. I like to take a, a hot, like an oven glove like this and you just grab them and then you can just peel them and they should just look like spaghetti. The nice thing about spaghetti squash is you can use absolutely all of the squash. You can get all the way down to the rind. Spaghetti squash is not just a clever name. I tried out some new audio equipment for this video and at this point in the video it was not cooperating with me so I'm just gonna talk over myself. I didn't freeze the squash beforehand in the deep freezer so I just selected not frozen so the machine can cool down first. That's how you want them right there. A little bit of crisp and a little bit of uh, brown on there and you should be able to poke it with your finger and it should be nice and soft. So I think I'm going to actually take a paper towel and try and get a little bit of this extra oil off of this. 
All right, there's our oven squash. I'm gonna go pop this in the freeze dryer with the other squash. All right, I'm gonna label our oven baked with a little sticker here. This second tray has the raw squash that's diced and then the, uh, the squash that was in the Instant Pot. And then I think I'm just gonna do some apples on the bottom. See you tomorrow. All right, we just finished up. It looks like it was 43 hours and 30 minutes. So here's our oven baked. So here's our oven baked. And then here is our Instant Pot. Here's our whole squash and it is super light. It feels like styrofoam almost. I think the most difficult part of reconstituting these is gonna be keeping them in the strands and keeping them from not going back into a powder. I just realized that I forgot to weigh this before I freeze dried it, which I, I meant to do, but I did not do. Uh, I think that would be helpful in reconstituting something like this because it will keep it from getting soggy and uh, over reconstituted, if that's a word even. I think I'm gonna try and reconstitute these, uh, just put some water on some of the, the oven and the uh, Instant Pot versions. And then I'm gonna put this whole ones back in the Instant Pot because I think that's the best way. So I've put a cup of water back in here just like we did when we originally cooked them. I think I'm gonna put some of the loose uh, Instant Pot squash back in there just because the Instant Pot, if you've never used it to reconstitute, is really easy um, and it's very gentle because it uses steam and pressure as opposed to just boiling and it's a lot more gentle on whatever you're cooking so if, if it's something that's fragile like this that you don't want it to lose its shape uh, the instant pot is usually the way to go so i only put three minutes back on the instant pot because i don't think it'll take as much time as it did when we originally cooked it so i've got our oven baked here and i've got our instant pot here and i've got some really hot water that's been in the microwave for about three minutes so i'm just going to go very light on this and I'm hoping that this doesn't just get gooey it's just gonna be really hard to keep that that noodle texture to it so I had a feeling that the feeling just pouring water over it was not really gonna work that well and I figured it would kind of make it a little bit gooey um, which it is it the the noodles it just kind of seems they're, they're a little bit more thin and they want to stick together a lot more than if you just pulled it out of the out of the oven or right out of the instant pot so i think the the instant pot hopefully is going to be our saving grace here and the oven baked i was a little unsure of whether it would even freeze dry just because it had that that oil in it but it definitely keeps the the oven baked has a lot better flavor by itself uh, squash usually is not real flavorful, but with the oil and the baked, unfortunately, it just got kind of gooey. While we're waiting this last minute for the Instant Pot, what can you do to kind of spice up the flavor of spaghetti squash? Um, we actually make spaghetti, so you can do meatballs um, with some marinara sauce, and that actually is pretty tasty. There's also quite a few bakes that you can do with spaghetti squash, but really the, the benefits of spaghetti squash are that it grows extremely well in a garden. It's easy to grow. You can grow lots of it. Uh, there's lots of nutrients. It's full of fiber and good vitamins. And ideally, if this turns out well, it's good for freeze drying too. All right, here we go. Well, at five minutes, it's not looking promising. This is really strange. It's got a real weird texture to it. It's very spongy. Um, the part that's actually dipped into the water is, uh, is coming back okay, but the pressure cook itself is not really doing it. And then as for the, the whole squash, I don't think it's gonna work. It's very, uh, it's very stringy. Let's throw it in for a little bit longer and see what happens. I'm actually going to take the rack, the rack out and see if that helps. Okay, so I added five more minutes on. Let's see if anything changed. So the whole squash is definitely a bust. It looks like it, it pretty much just burnt it. Um, and same result as with the water, except for even worse. 
when it was in the water. It's just a, a complete mush now. So if you've had successes or failures with squash, uh, spaghetti squash, or any kind of squash, let me know in the comments section. And also don't forget to join the Facebook page and let us know on the Facebook page because it helps the whole community. I think the best chance you have of using the spaghetti squash is you could possibly try and rehydrate it with marinara. You could also powder it and just use it for its nutrients and vitamins. You could put them in smoothies or in some kind of other bakes or soups or stews. All in all though, not a great success today, but we all learned something. So in the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple and we'll catch you next week.